Louis? Louis, the conference is about to start any minute. This is not the time to be... Damn it. What's going on? I, I don't know exactly, Mr. President. I was looking for my mother and I, I came upon this body. My God. You don't think Sarah did it, do you? Mr. President, you really shouldn't get involved. Please be on your way. I'll take care of this. You didn't come this way and you didn't see anything. You're right. It's for the best. If Sarah did that, I don't know what kind of hornet's nest she's kicked open, but I do wish you luck, my friend. Ah, oh, darn, the conference is starting. Time is of the essence. Sort this out and join us as quickly as you can in the conference room. Everyone will be expecting you. Mr. President, this is not really the right time, and I, I didn't come for that. Your mother's seat cannot remain vacant. You must replace her while she's still missing. Your mother and I were to support Mortar on this project. I don't know what the subject is, but the future of our countries depends on it. Given the importance of all this to Mortimer, he won't let the conference begin without you. So if you don't want more servants coming looking for you, I'd advise you to join us quickly and to put a brave face on it. The best favor you can do for yourself, Louis, and for Sarah, is to come and support Mortimer's project at the conference. Look, I don't mind following you, but I should warn you, I have no idea what this is all about. So I can't make any promises as to what I might do. I shall make my decision after the debate, when the time comes. Ah, very well. As you wish. You will see once you hear everything. But given the situation, I think you will have everything to gain by joining Mortimer's side. I'm going. Don't be long. Tell them that I'm on my way. Ah, Louis, I've been expecting you. Uh, thank you for joining us. We are about to begin our conference. Let me explain what is at stake. Thank you kindly, but what do you expect of me exactly? My mother's the one who's supposed to attend, not me. That is indeed what was initially intended. Unfortunately, she still hasn't been found, and my guests can't stay here indefinitely. The conference must begin, and it would be truly beneficial to the Order to join in the project. Consequently, I would like you to replace her during her absence. What is at stake here is of the utmost importance. It's important that the French Order gets their say. And should you need any advice, don't worry, you are not alone, Louis. Very well. Can you give me a brief explanation of the aim of it all? Of course, Louis, I was coming to that. The aim of these meetings is to bring together the most influential people in order to think together about the future. But the future of who? Of the world, Louis. Our desire is to steer the destiny of our respective countries for the good of all, and to no longer suffer the random hazards of history. In concrete terms, how do you organize your discussions? A conference is always organized the same way. There are two masters of ceremony who determine an important subject. You and Sir Gregory, I presume? Exactly. We shall be the masters of ceremony. It was our obligation to each bring to the table several guests in order to debate a subject. Once the debate is closed, a decision will be made by a vote of all the participants. By a unanimous vote. If the project is not agreed on by all, then it will be rejected. And neither of the two masters of ceremony have the right to vote. It's up to the guests alone to decide, Louis. In other words, us. Gregory and myself are merely the go-betweens. Finally, if the project is validated, each guest goes home and starts working to make it happen. It can take years. How long have you been active? Oh, this tradition has more or less always existed, Louis. It has continued from generation to generation. Do you often hold this kind of society dinner? 
In general, once a year, but in actual fact, it tends to be events that dictate our gatherings. Can you give me an example of an event that was decided here before being implemented in the outside world? Well, take the French Revolution. It was decided right here two years before its implementation in France. Concerning the case of the French Revolution, I wasn't invited. But as far as the American Revolution is concerned, Louis, I can testify that we planned it five years before implementing it, for example. Louis, let me keep you a moment. I have a dream that we shall lead by example and ensure that the American territory may remain in peace. Thank you for the thought, Lord Mortimer, but I don't see where you're leading. I'm coming to it, Mr. President. I need not remind you that North America is currently divided between the United States on the East Coast and Spain which occupies the remaining two-thirds of the continent. Well, I propose that Spain cede the center of the continent to France, namely all of Louisiana. Louisiana? But, well, it is not for sale! Lord Mortimer, I sincerely hope I have not come all this way just to hear you ramble on about what Spain should and should not do. When we went to all the trouble of gaining the territory a few years ago, it was not just to lose it today. Have I made myself clear? What did I tell you, William? You speak of union, and yet here you are, about to tear us apart. Duke Manuel, I perfectly understand you. But rest assured, you will soon adore my proposition. You shall see. Well, since you give me the choice, my good fellow, allow me to doubt it. However, I am impatient to hear what Spain could possibly gain from the sale of Louisiana. I never spoke of a sale, my good fellow. What? But I, I do not understand. There is one more territory left to conquer, if I am not mistaken, in the Northwest. It is, of course, occupied by your notorious Indians, but... We shall soon be rid of the savages, so that is not a question. Duke, these savages, as you call them, were there before you. They are on their homeland. As much as the black people of Africa, Monsieur de Richet, that does not stop your dear France from massacring them and sending them like cattle to Mr. Washington's cotton plantations to provide him with cheap labor. So you keep your morals to yourself, if you please. Senor, I would not like to be associated with that. The subject of black slaves in the United States of America is a complex subject, which we shall resolve at a future date. I must say, William, I find your project mostly disfavors me. I thought you were my friend. And I am, Mr. President. That is why I'm doing everything in my power to calm your expansionist fervor. France, in Louisiana, should persuade you not to attempt anything to take the territory by force. Louisiana is a vast wetland where you would needlessly lose most of your troops. It would weaken you and offer certain nations the perfect opportunity to take back your famous United States. I am protecting you from yourself, George. Trust me. I understand. But with friends like you, sir, I certainly don't need any more enemies. I hope you know what you're doing. Am I imagining things, or does it look like Washington isn't aware of Mortimer's plan? That's enough. I'm tired. We shall continue this discussion tomorrow, but please be aware that your project will never be ratified. Those who are opposed to this project, follow me. Are you coming with us, Monsieur de Richer? Come, Gregory. I think Louis would rather stay. Wouldn't you, Louis? At the risk of displeasing you, my lord, I'd rather follow Sir Gregory. I don't think this is a place for the Order. Louis? No! Let him go, Mr. President. Everyone is free to choose.
President George Washington. Washington has to hide, shall we? The president's personal reserve of laudanum, and judging by the quantity, he can't go without it. Ah, there's also a letter. What are you doing in my room? Uh, as I walked by your room, I, I noticed the door was open. I wanted to check that no one had gone in. Hmm. And what is the outcome of your investigation, Inspector de Richer? Go ahead. Laugh it off. I, I didn't see anyone, Mr. President. Splendid. All is safe and sound. Well, since you're here, can I get you something to drink? No, no thank you, Mr. President. As you wish. Well, Louis, it's getting late and this is not my first conference, so let's get straight to the point. You are here to motivate me to change sides. I have decided not to follow Mortimer. I noticed. Every man must make his own choice, what can we say? That's the political game. And you did not commit to supporting Mortimer, so there's nothing for you to feel bad about. So, what can I do for you? President Washington, I regret that my situation is contrary to yours, especially as I really do respect you. Me too, Louis. Let us not mix business and emotion. Understood. I've just come from a meeting with Sir Gregory and his supporters. They are all rallying against Mortimer's project. That is to be expected. Great Britain, the Kingdom of Spain and Sicily, the Kingdom of Prussia, the Holy Empire, the Kingdom of Portugal, of Bohemia, and of Hungary. I know, Louis. I know. The coalition against France also gives me cause for concern. I'm certainly not saying that, on paper, Mortimer's plan seems very viable. Anyway, you haven't really said what you wanted to say. Tell me, Louis, what have you come here to sell me? You should join home. And why would I do that? This type of meeting might be familiar to you, but for me, I must admit, Mr. President, it's haul a bit over my head. It's only natural, Louis. But you are managing rather well for a first-timer. You've chosen the wrong allies, that's all. I hope my mother doesn't hold it against me if I've made a mistake. Anyway, if Lord Mortimer does succeed, it would be no mean feat. Did he tell you what he would gain from it? What do you mean? Well, Mortimer's plan has been meticulously prepared for many years, I imagine. Of that, you can be sure. It's only natural, and his plan leaves nothing to chance. No, that's what... He never commits his own fortune, let alone his reputation, since you're the one who takes center stage here. In fact... Whether he wins or loses, everything is arranged so that he comes out of it intact. Yes, I... Ah, you've got to hand it to him, though. He's a master at putting together a plan which puts himself at no risk. That's true. Don't worry, he... you can trust him. Of course. I'll bet he's invested in a river transport company on the Mississippi or somewhere like that. 
It's true I had never thought about what he might have to gain. Tell me what Sir Gregory has to offer that I don't already have with Lord Mortimer. You are a man of conviction, Mr. President. You would never make a choice that could cost the American people very dearly. If Mortimer falls, he will bring the United States down with him. Haven't the American people suffered enough? I would never do anything that would put my people in danger. Exactly. Therefore, choose your allies wisely, sir. I must admit, your arguments do make sense, Louis. Louis, you convinced me. I congratulate you for your performance, because I didn't think it could happen. I merely exposed the facts to you. Don't spoil everything with your false modesty now. You really were very good, and that's that. In any case, I shall follow you on this one. This may well arouse Lord Mortimer's wrath, but I must put the United States before anything else. Have we finished, Louis? Absolutely, Mr. President. I shan't keep you any longer. Allow me to take my leave. Good night, Louis. Get some rest. Tomorrow will be a very big day. Well, that's one thing out of the way. Only thing left to do is wait for the conference to resume tomorrow morning. My friends, the conference is about to begin. Please excuse me if I troubled you last night with my project. I understand that you might well have a few questions to ask. As you know, the final vote will be cast in a few days. This morning's aim is to answer your questions and check the temperature of your respective positions so that we may reach a greater understanding. As always, Lord Mortimer. Uh, we parted in perfect disagreement, my lord. Where would you like us to take it from? Come, sir. Please let William believe he still has a chance of winning us over. Otherwise, his imprecations will lack panache, and we shall be bored stiff. Oh, let me reassure you. I am convinced that a good night's sleep has brought sound advice, and that this morning will be even more interesting. Therefore, I would like to go around the table in order to hear everyone's first impressions. Well, I am still firmly against it. Even though my choice won't count. Against. 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 And you, Luke Manuel? Against, of course. Well, as for me, I am for Lord Mortimer's project. Despite Duchesse Hillsborough's overwhelmingly convincing nocturnal attentions. What? So Emily was playing at trying to win over guests last night? It was nothing more than a friendly little chat, of course. How could it be otherwise? And by the way, remember me to your husband when you see him. And you, President Washington, what is your position? Well, you see, Monsieur Bonaparte, I would rather you'd have forgotten me for a minute. William, I am sorry, but I cannot follow you this time. George? What? I am against. William, please excuse me. I cannot commit the United States to such an enterprise. It's just too risky. It wasn't your fault. There was nothing else you could have done. I think everyone needs a little rest. As for me, I think I shall remain with Lord Mortimer, Sir Gregory. You are committing a grave error, Louis. Time will tell. My friends, I would like to thank you for staying. Good God, William. What is this I hear about you reinforcing military power in Louisiana? I have no interest in having France for a neighbor, and you know that very well. Calm down, George. Louis, explain our plan to Mr. Washington, please. I would have been only too glad to, Lord Mortimer. Unfortunately, I'm not sure myself that I have fully understood all the details of your plan. Oh, Louis. President Washington, the United States will double in size. By what miracle have you... You need to expand, George. You and France are the two major democracies in the modern world. 
It is necessary that you both become superpowers. Are you really going to sponsor democracy throughout the world? Of course, Monsieur Peru. That's why I don't want Spain to get too attached to those weapons. Uh, please continue, Louis. Explain my vision to Mr. President. By going through France, Spain won't suspect that it's you who's going to take possession of Louisiana. They'll even believe that France will be a protective buffer between itself and California and you on the East Coast. If Senor Godoy was afraid that you might take the territory by force, now he is reassured. You would never attack France. But why didn't you tell me before? So that Lord Mortimer would appear to be isolated without support. Exactly. You got it, Louis. Lord Mortimer retains the advantage by advancing under cover. And for it to work, he needed you to act surprised. William, you haven't changed. Always one step ahead. One step ahead? You're joking. More like five. On that note, my friends, it's getting late. Mr. President, continue to take offense over my project when we resume the conference in the morning. You do it to a T. And if Sir Gregory has the audacity to send you an emissary to convince you to go against me, do me a favor. String him along if you can. The more they believe we are divided, the more we'll have our hands free. Only too happy to oblige. Now, let us get some rest. We've got a big day tomorrow. Good night, gentlemen. Good night. President Washington, what is your position? Four, of course. You've given us all a fine lesson in courage. I... thank you. He owes you his life. That's quite something. That madman deserves to die. We are providing Monsieur Peru with care, but rest assured, he is no longer a danger to himself or anyone else. I think everyone needs a little rest. Next time, I'll listen to my mother. Not a day has gone by without something happening to me. What now? Louis, open up, please. Coming, Mr. President, I'm coming. Louis, ah, oh, there you are at last. Yes, I... I just saw your mother. She was accompanied by Emily, and they both went into the Duchess's room. I tried to join them, but I was refused entry. Louis, this does not bode well. Oh, shit. Emily might want to avenge your sister. I must act quickly. You're right, Mr. President. Thank you. Ah, Louis. Glad you're here. Blasted. He's gonna talk about my mother. Come and see what I've found. There are pieces of paper in the ashes of the chimney. Someone's been burning something here. Incredible. He doesn't seem to want to speak to me about what happened between my mother and the Hillsborough sisters. Show me a little. Look. It's possible to distinguish two different writing styles. Hmm. The rest of the correspondence between my mother and Emma. Someone tried to burn an exchange of messages. I'm certain. There must be more. Shit. What on earth is he doing? Ah, I see. I know what it's about. Do you know who was doing their communicating in this room? Yes, but... Of course, we must keep it to ourselves, because it is still a sensitive matter. Volner and Elizabeth had an affair. Volner hinted that he'd found a way to remain discreet about it. I admit it is ingenious. Well, I would never have guessed. Delighted to have helped, but I still have to find my mother. Of course. We shall see each other later in that case. I wasted enough time. The Bible. Hey, look, there. Hmm. No, I don't see anything. Come, Louis, look. Someone's clearly drawn a four in the dust. I have a clue. <sighs> I better take the Bible before he works his way back to it. <laughs> 